Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. So I thought I'd do a video on a kind of a real live conversation with a customer about potential stud services. Um, so I'm gonna start off by reading you this. This was the first contact that uh, uh, Cressel Davis made with me through actually um, email. He said, hi James, my name, my name is Cressel. I've been following on YouTube for some time now. I wanna thank you for all of the information you've given me. Uh, you're welcome. And he says, my wife and I have decided we'd like to have a litter of uh, puppies from a Frenchie that we've got as a, we were given as a gift a year ago. So they've had this girl for over a year now. And they want to get my opinion on a great, what would be a great match for cinnamon. And he has attached both a picture of her along with her coat color results. Great, this makes my life a lot easier because now I've got a really clear idea about what this girl can produce. And so I can ask some pertinent questions to try to help him decide what makes sense. So we'll start off by showing you a picture of her. So there she is. And you can see that she is a fawn pied Frenchie. And I think there's another picture in here. There she is, another picture of her there. Okay, so you can see. Now, I wanna point something out here. She's obviously a pied. She's got some freckling on her body. She does not have a lot of color on her ears. So that's something that kind of uh, makes me think a little bit about what's called an extreme pied. So I'm gonna get rid of that picture. Now you're gonna see my ugly face. All right, so, so he sent me as well the DNA on this dog. And the DNA on this dog is big D, big D. Does not have any copy of chocolate at all, of, of uh, blue, the dilution gene. The dog is E-M-E. -E. And that is black mask, has one copy of black mask and has one copy of not cream, not cream. That is interesting because this is a result I think from UC Davis and I suspect that what they mean is is this dog actually has one copy of, so this is the way I think it should be drawn. This dog has one copy of black mask, one not black mask, one copy of not cream, probably one copy of cream. So we're just going to write this down. This may be incorrect because it's not clear on the DNA report, but I suspect this dog is in fact EE, -E, one copy of cream. The dog is KN, KN, does not have brindle and is ATAT, -AT, which means that it's a fawn, which of course we can see that. I'm going uphill here. I hate it when I do that. I hate it when I draw these things. I've got to learn to draw this stuff properly. KN, KN. AT, AT, and SS means it's got two copies of spotting or pied. Right. So, what we have here is we have a fawn pied, doesn't carry blue, may carry, a, may carry a copy of cream, does not carry brindle. I already knew about the brindle because fawn dogs don't have brindle. So, because it's AT, AT, it looks fawn, we knew it would be AT, AT, we knew it wouldn't have brindle. But that's great. Okay. So, so then the question is. Um, so here, here's how the conversation goes. Okay, so Gressel, what's your plan here? Are you wanting puppies that you're going to give to family members? Um, are you raising puppies because you want to have some more puppies for maybe do some more breeding yourself? Do you want to sell the puppies? And so the answer for him was, which is most cases is, well, I probably want to, I'd like to sell some puppies and I'd like to have fun with it with the kids. Um, but I mean, there is a financial element to this, so you know, dollars do matter. Um, and I would probably, if I have a really pretty girl, I'd probably keep her and maybe continue to do it another time. All right, very good. So, what goes through my mind then is uh, let's look at the girl. So, this is I'm going to classify her. So, the first thing is that she is a pied with little, so she may be what's called an extreme pied. Extreme pied. So an extreme pied is a dog that has, it's a pied dog, so it's got a base color of white with another color on top of it, which in this case is, is, a, is a fawn color. So the problem with extreme pied is that pieds that don't have much color or any color on their ears have a tendency to have hearing problems. Now, he's not saying that his girl has any hearing problems. 
and she might have um, you know, limited hearing, but it's obviously not affecting her because they don't know about it. So she lives a normal, healthy life. That's great. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be producing puppies that really have no color. They've got bald white faces because those dogs really can have problems of hearing. And over the years, I've produced a single dog that was completely deaf. It was a beautiful dog. It was almost totally white, had a little bit of color on its back end, and it had a bit of color on one, over one eye. I didn't even realize the dog was, was deaf because it was there with its other litter mates. But when, the moment that that dog was by itself and sleeping by itself, I would come up on that dog and it would be asleep and I could be making all kinds of noise in the kitchen and the dog would just be dead to the world. It wouldn't make, move a muscle until I went up there and touched the dog and then that dog would just move all of a sudden, wake up and be a happy, normal Frenchie. And just to prove the point, I got a couple of saucepan lids while I was asleep, and I took those saucepans and I just started bashing them together, making a hell of a noise. Dog never moved a muscle until I touched it, and then it woke up. That dog got placed into a home. It learned sign language. To this day, it's a happy, healthy dog, but it's a special dog under special, special conditions. So it's not that that dog needed to be put to sleep or anything silly like that, but it was just, this was not something that you want to perpetuate. So. That brings to my mind, we need to be a little bit careful with this person's dog because we've got to think about this, this uh, potentially making extreme pies. Okay, I'm gonna take that off the table for right now. So the question gets to be, what can, well, the next thing is structurally, how does this dog look? It's a smaller dog. This dog weighs about 20 pounds. So that is, you know, it's a nice small Frenchie. She's not big framed, uh, there's nothing, She's not really bulky, so she's got that skinnier look to her. But there's nothing about her to me that says, oh, there's huge problems here. She's, you haven't seen the video, but I have. She, she's got a good gait. She's a happy, healthy Frenchie. They've got two Frenchies in the house. They both get along. She's, she's socially a nice dog. So all of that's a plus, right. So, so then what goes through my mind is, okay, so what can we produce from this dog? What colors can we expect to get out? What are our options? And that helps us decide who a potential stud dog would be. Now, uh, I'm gonna put a plug in for myself. One of the things that I have to offer to people, and that's anybody who calls me up, I have a lot of French, French Bulldog studs. I have a lot of them because I invented a product called Shipmate that has been made me very successful in shipping semen all around the United States, Europe, Mexico, Canada. And because of that, my whole stud business has developed. And so now I know a lot about Frenchy DNA and uh, stud dogs and how you might breed dogs and what the results will be. So when, when people talk to me, I bring that to the table. I am never here to tell my customers what they should do. I'm here to help them make a choice so they can get what they want out of it. So with, with Cressel, the point here is he would like to get smaller dogs. Great. Let's match, match that girl up to a dog that is, that is not on the big side. Um, and... You know, if I've got a dog, for instance, got a long nose, or I've got a dog, dog that's, uh, I'm talking about the customer's dog's got a long back, you know, all these things, we can help by matching it with a dog that has a very smushed face and has a shorter back, and hopefully we'll get a distribution of puppies between the, um, the, the frames of the two dogs, the stud and the female. But there's nothing here frame-wise that we need to fix. We've got a small dog, we want a small dog to make it to. Great. So, let's talk about the pie. This dog is a pied dog. So I'm going to do a Punnett square here, and we have three different possibilities of what we could breed this dog to. So here's Cressel's dog on the top. There's the pied girl. If we choose a pied boy on my side, then every puppy we produce will be pied. We will have a litter of totally pieds. So if the customer thinks that that's what they'd like, or pied dogs, great, let's mate to a pied dog. We have to mate to a dog that has lots of color on his pied. We do not want to get, we don't want to push the envelope on this extreme pied situation. So if he, and he's not going to elect to do this by the way, but if he did elect to go with a pied dog and get all pieds, we have to realize that, that because she is a relatively white dog, that we could run into problems with some puppies being extreme pied. And to counteract that, we'd want to choose a male that has lots of color on him. I have a guy called Rumble who would do that. Okay, so that's one choice. The next choice would be that he was, chooses to mate to a stud that has a single copy 
of pi, what would we get? The answer is, is that we would get a litter of half pi's and a half not pi, there would be pi carriers. Okay, so that's, that's another way to go with this. And uh, that's a nice combination because now, you know, you have two different audiences, audiences you're talking to. I personally like pieds. They're really colorful. I like the look of them. I have a, a pied horse. I like pieds. Um, but a lot of breeders are not crazy about pieds. I'm not exactly sure why because you can completely control the, 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 the offspring you have by choosing by how you choose what you're going to mate to. But again, regardless of that, he liked the idea of half pieds. Okay. So then maybe we choose a dog that is NS, a dog that has, normally drive the other way around, we choose a dog that is NS, is a possible choice here to get a litter of half pies. The other alternative is, is we choose a dog that has no pie gene whatsoever at all. And if we do that, then every puppy we produce is not pied, but carries pied. All the puppies can produce pied puppies, but none of them will be pied. And then we completely escape this issue about the extreme pie. All right, so there's the, there, there's the pie gene sorted out. So I think that for him, we have two choices. Either he goes with a dog that is no pie gene, or he would goes with one of my studs, or somebody else's stud that has a copy of pie. Gene. And let's write this the right way around, because this would normally be that way around. Okay, so with this line here, we get half pieds. And this one here, we get no pies. So there's two choices to that. Okay. Right, now. The blue gene. If we had a blue gene present, then it would be nice to maybe produce some blue puppies for him. But since this dog does not have blue, that's not happening. You cannot get any blue puppies out of this. So you could breed to a dog that is blue, Here's the Punnett square to show what we'd get. So here's Cinnamon, his dog on top, and a stud that we're going to choose who is blue. We will get a litter of entirely dogs that don't look blue but carry a blue gene. Phonetically, pheno-wise, physically, they won't look blue. Genetically, geno-wise, they will have a copy of blue. So we will produce all fawn dogs that carry blue. Okay. And since he is thinking about keeping a dog, if he has a nice pretty female, to continue on and do a bit more breeding, then I think this is a great choice for him. Because now, we're gonna, the puppies that he produces, we don't have to test for it, we know that every single puppy that he gets is going to be that. Every single puppy that we, he produces will be a blue carrier. Okay, so now going on forwards. So let's look at now the cream situation. <clears throat> so, here's dog, try to screw it again. And remember, every single one of these genes, they all look at them separately. Every single one of these we're going to look at separately because they are don't, in most cases, they don't interact with each other. So it's really just each is on its individual basis. So here is his dog, one copy of cream. Let's put this with a cream dog, what do we get? We get half of them are cream carriers, half of them are cream. Any dog that is cream, will cover up everything else that's going on. It will look like a cream dog. Cream is one of those one of those genes that if you get two copies of cream, an EE dog, it's always cream. It could be a lilac dog covered in cream, which is a platinum. It doesn't matter what else. It could be a brindle dog. You put cream in there, it covers it up. It's like white paint. All right, so actually I'm going to propose to him, because of a particular dog I have, that we're gonna choose a dog that is actually a cream carrier. And so then what do we get? So let's just go back into this pipe square and we'll get this right. What do we get? We get that. Uh, we get one quarter of the dogs. Remember, this is each one of these represents 25%. One quarter of the dogs won't have any copy of cream. 
half the dogs, two quarters, half the dogs will carry a copy of cream and one quarter of the dogs will be cream. So we get three quarters that don't look cream and we get one quarter of cream. Okay, so if we put this with a dog that's also EE, then what are we gonna get? We are gonna get some EEs, one quarter, and we're gonna get some E, big E, and some big E's, basically those together will be three quarters. So I like that. So now what have we got? We have got a dog that's gonna produce a litter of fawn, uh, it's, no, it's just, they're all going to be fawn dogs, except for one quarter of them are going to be cream. So that gives a nice variation. All right, so I like that. Right, definitely, I'm always telling everybody, always keep away from brindle. And people say to me, what's wrong with brindle? What, what's wrong with a brindle dog? There's nothing wrong with a brindle dog other than it mucks up all these other things you'd like to do with things like tan points. So not every stud I have doesn't have a copy of brindle, but any stud that I've had who's been on my clan for the last five years does not have a copy of brindle. So we're gonna to breed to a non-brindle dog and so we're gonna get no brindle. So let's just write this down here. So what we're gonna get, we're gonna get blue carriers, all of them, of which one quarter are cream and three quarters are fawn, with no brindle, which is this thing here, no brindle, no brindle, Okay, um, now, the AT gene, I've got a lot of dogs that are um, AT, AT uh, they are, sorry, I've written this down wrong. That's not AT, AT, that's AYAY, -A -Y. sorry. That's AYAY, -A -Y. and that, that's the fawn gene. That's the fawn gene, sorry. So, I've got a lot of dogs that are AT, AT, so we're just gonna throw this in here. So, Punnett Square again, <clears throat> Cinnamon, his dog, is a Y, a Y, mated to a tan pointed dog, A T A T. Every dog will look like this. They're all copies of tan points. They, they may show it to a degree, it won't be very bold. Uh, as long as you keep the brindle out of it, which we are, a single copy of tan points is likely to show up to a degree, but it won't be very striking. All right, so. If we chose a dog that's A-T-A-T, -A -T, then we get all dogs that are A-T-A-Y. They carry tan points. So they carry tan points, carry tan points. That's useful again because now, well, we'll talk about why it's useful here a bit. All right, so we're gonna, we went with the NN. We're gonna, know, we're gonna get, a, we're gonna go with an NN dog. We're gonna get all dogs that are pied carriers. They won't look pied, they're pied carriers. Pied carry, pied carry. Okay. All right, so what we can get for him, I'm gonna go, we do one more thing after this. What we can get for him would be a litter of half, a quarter creams, three quarter fawns, all of which would carry blue and carry a copy of tan points, and it'd all carry pie, but none would be pie. Great, I like it. Um, so I would actually, now this dog is BB, not chocolate, but I would, be interested in putting it with a BB dog and Punnett Square again gets you a litter of chocolate carriers. All right, so they're chocolate carriers. So if we do that, they're chocolate carriers. Again, we don't see it, they don't have red eye glow. We don't have to test for it because that's the only choice we have. We know they have to be chocolate dogs. Okay, so what have we got now? So we have a litter of one quarter cream, three quarters fawn, no pies, no brindles. They all carry blue and chocolate. Wonderful, nice litter, gives you some variation. So that is what I was suggesting, but here's one more wrinkle on this. This dog does not carry merle. It's a non-merle dog. I'm suggesting that we, we breed this dog to a merle carrier. That is a merle dog. Remember that merles, you never breed a merle to a merle. You never want a double merle dog. If you do, you're gonna have big issues with potentially blindness, deafness, all kinds of bad things. So you always breed a merle dog back to a non-merle to produce a litter of half merles. So if we put that in there, do the Punnett square again, you're running out of room here, I hope you can see this on the board, and not off the edge. So his dog is a non-merle bred to a single merle dog. We get 
this. Half merrells, half not merrells. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it, I like it, I like it. So what do you get? So you get all dogs that are either this or they're this. So you get a half merrells and you get a half fawns. Well, fawns and creams. So that, I've got a dog and his name is Picasso. He is a little bitty tiny, Lada Contan Merle, carries cream, very pretty little dog. He's not been going for very long now, but he's already produced quite a few litters for us. Beautiful little dog. Here's the guy that I think that, she, that I think that that's what, uh, um, uh, now this dog is um, a year old and not in heat yet, so it's gonna be another two to four months, who knows exactly, before this dog goes into heat. So he's got some time to think about this. But this is, this would be, Picasso would be, the, would be my go-to dog. I've got other dogs that will do, do the non-meryl part. I've got one dog that does the meryl properly. So that would make for a very interesting litter. So what would he get? He would get a litter of one quarter creams, and then he'd get a litter of three-eighths fawns and three-eighths uh, merls, and all the dogs would carry blue and chocolate. Um, and, uh, um, and most of the dogs would also carry cream. That would make for a very nice litter for him out of a dog that genetically is not very interesting. Nice framed dog, socially great, great family pet, love the dog, end up with this really interesting litter that lots of people would be knocking on the door and saying, hey, those puppies are so pretty, I'd love to have one. All right, so I just wanted to go through this process with you because um, it's interesting that this, this Especially if you've got a dog that's got more colors in it, you can get a lot more different colors out of it. But even with a dog that doesn't have colors in it, you can still get a very interesting litter. And this, these puppies that we produce here, I'm now gonna take all this off the board. We're gonna talk about what he can expect to produce with a puppy that he keeps from this litter. All right, this is getting dry. And by the way, if you're interested in my stud dogs, or just talking about what you might get, anytime anybody wants, they can text me, they can call me, and they can go to our website and look at these dogs. There's videos and pictures and all the genetics on these dogs. Um, so, you know, I do have these conversations, literally a few of them every day with customers, potential customers and people who are breeding to other dogs. Okay, so what have we got here? So what we're gonna produce is gonna be we're going to produce, all the puppies are going to be chocolate carriers. All the puppies are going to be blue carriers. The puppies are either going to be cream or cream carriers. There'll be a small number that will actually won't have cream at all. We're not going to worry about that right now. None of them will have brindle. And they will all have a copy of tan points. And they will all have a copy of pied and they will either be MM, big M, or not. They'll be half merls and not. Okay, so let's take the merls from this. And let's take the, that one, just for the heck of it. And let's see what that dog would produce for us. What can we get out of that? So this is one of the puppies that he keeps, a pretty little girl that he keeps. What is he going to produce from that? Well, the answer is half the puppies are going to be morals. So we're going to produce a litter of half morals. That we know. If we put this with a platinum dog, a dog that is both blue, both chocolate, both blue and, both, and cream, that has tan points. So if we breed this back to a BB, DD, EE, KNKN, ATAT -A -T dog. Um, we're not going to worry with the pie at the moment. What would we get? We would get half merrells and half not merrells, of which half the dogs would be blue that carry chocolate. Actually, that's not right. It's three eighths. It's three eighths would be blue that carry chocolate. Three eighths would be chocolate that carry blue, 
and one eighth. Uh, I've got to get my two eighths, a quarter, or half and half. A quarter, a quarter would be platinums. Those are blues and chocolates that, that are covered in cream. And half the dogs would be 80 80 full tan points. And half the dogs are going to be mum. Oh my gosh, what a litter. What a litter that would be. Next generation, what a litter that would be. What an interesting litter that would be. So, Right there in the next generation, you're in a completely different in environment. You are producing blues that carry chocolate, chocolates that carry blue, half of them have got full tan points, a quarter of the whole lot of platinums, and the half of them are murals. What a litter. There you go. So, you spend more money maybe on getting a really powerful DNA in the stud dog that will not really show up in the first round of the puppies, but produces something really awesome down the road. So that's it. Um, it'll be interesting to see exactly what Crestle decides to do. I'll bet you my bottom dollar that he goes with Picasso and uh, a year and a half, two years from now, it'll be very interesting to see um, what he then produces from a puppy that keeps from that. I think that he will be very excited about it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, if you like it, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to us. If we've missed something or you think that we've got something wrong, let us know. Uh, and uh, you know the most important thing is, be nice to your puppies. Bye.